So as you can see, we're here in St Pancras today, and our object of interest are these benches you can see behind me. Now they're interesting structural objects for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they're quite long, long spanning, but they've also got quite a slender profile. So to understand how they can actually resist the loads, there's going to be a bit of structural trickery we have to look at. So let's look at the loads this structure is going to have applied to it. And obviously it's going to have its self weight, but it's quite small, quite a light structure, so that's not going to be too significant. Well, also the main load is going to be the weight of people sitting on it, placing bags on it, and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's going to have to be dealt with. Now, you can see we're, we're inside, we're in an indoor setting, so live loads caused by weather, so snow and wind aren't going to be particularly likely. Um, there might be accidental loads of someone kicking the bench as well or something, but that's going to be quite rare. But one interesting thing to know about the bench is that because the back of it isn't entirely vertical, when people are sitting on it, they're going to transmit a bit of a lateral load as well. The bench is also going to have to be designed to deal with that. Okay, we're going to look at two different ways we could model this bench. And the top here is a, what we call a simply supported beam, which is two supports which stop the deflection of the beam but allow rotation around the two supports. And at the bottom here we've got two fixed supports, which is basically just a, a different case where there's no rotation allowed. So you're allowed some deflection in the middle of the beam, but you see the, at the two supports it stays just in the same plane. And we can add some loads to these two structures, these two models, and see how those two different support conditions change the behavior of the structure. And you can see, I've added about a kilogram of weight to each. And this one here, you can clearly see quite a bit of deflection at mid-span. With the fixed case, there's barely anything at all. Now, in reality, this bench, the supports, are gonna probably be somewhere in between these two cases. Not completely free to rotate, and not completely fixed. But if we wanna take a simple approach to analyze the bench, we can model it on a simple supported beam, and we know that our calculations and our assumptions are gonna be safe. So we're gonna have a little close look at the supports of this bench, because actually they're a little bit unusual, and they exhibit some interesting behavior. The thing you really wanna notice about this bench is although the individual members of the supports are very slender, they're offset at a distance from each other. Just there, you see. Call that the X. And so what this means is that the bench supports can actually provide some moment resistance. Now if you imagine someone sitting on the bench, providing a load to the bench, which is gonna give you some bending behavior in the bench itself, then what's gonna happen is, one of these members is gonna go into compression, and the other member is gonna go into tension. And the distance between them, this DX, is gonna act as the lever arm, which is gonna provide a moment to resist the bending force in the bench. And we call this pair of forces like this a couple. And there'll be one on the front side of the bench and the same setup you're gonna see on the other side of the bench as well. And although this isn't gonna provide full moment resistance, it is gonna help resist some of those moments a little bit. So when we're trying to draw a bending moment diagram for the beam we've been looking at, or the simply supported beam model of the bench, there's a really good trick we can use. Now, Robert Hooke says that a hanging chain like what we see here hangs as an arch, the lines of thrust of an arch, stand. And there's something similar we can say about a bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam. And actually, the loaded chain is a very good approximation of the bending moment diagram we'll see. So here the, the chain is experiencing a uniformly distributed load and that's under its own self weight. But what we can do is we can add loads to it. So the bending moment diagram looks like this at the moment. But if I add a point load in the middle that dominates the self weight of the chain, what I get is a triangular bending moment diagram with the greatest moment in the middle which is actually what we see in real life. And I can do the same with an off-center point load. And this is, again, the shape of the bending moment diagram. Or I can add two point loads at once, and I get a trapezium-shaped bending moment diagram. But I can do something a bit more subtle as well. If I assume that this self-weight isn't dominated, I can make a composite bending moment diagram out of the original parabola and some 
weight of roughly equivalent force. And I get an interesting shape, which is the superposition of the bending moment diagram you'd see from this relatively small point load and the self-weight which causes a parabolic distribution.